Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is John, or Last Frontier Bricks, and this is my review of the brand new LEGO Star Wars Mandalorian Fang Fighter vs. TIE Interceptor. It is set number 75348, comes with 957 pieces and 4 minifigures, and sells for the US retail price of $100. As this video was hopefully going to be released on May 4th, this set is basically brand new as it, you, it can get. And uh, hopefully this uh, review will help you decide whether you intend, uh, intend to buy this set or not. This set is based off of the last few episodes of the Season 3 of The Mandalorian. So this uh, review will include spoilers for those who haven't seen it yet. The front of the box shows off all four minifigures, plus the two who ships in a pretty cool action pose. While the back box art includes another cool action scene along with showing off most of the set's play features. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and get this bad boy opened. The set itself comes with a total of 8 numbered bags and 2 instruction manuals. One for the Mandalorian Starfighter and one for the TIE Interceptor, which is actually a pretty cool idea. So if you want to build this with uh, your sibling or if you want to build it with your parent, if someone bought it or whoever bought it for you, that's totally awesome. However, uh, there is one little bit of a hiccup. Um, as you know, as you may notice, uh, the you know, two uh, instruction manuals show which bags and so correspond for which build, whether it be the Fang Fighter or the Tie Interceptor. However, uh, you may notice that the uh, the set and the bag numbers only go up to seven. So, little goof up on Lego's part. Oh, well, one minor note about those instruction manuals. They actually do show that you do need the eighth bag. So uh, it's not like they completely forgot a whole bunch of steps in the manual. They just forgot to mention that there is an eighth bag. And in the, um, in the other instruction manual, they do show a little ad showing off some of the sets based off Mandalorian and the Book of Boba Fett. So, all right, with that out of the way, we'll go ahead and start taking a look at the set itself starting with the minifigures. And starting off with the minifigures in the order that you put them together, first off is the Mandalorian himself, Din Djarin. His torso and arm printing is pretty much the, it's the same you see in all the other versions. However, this one is rocking a few new tricks. First off, he does have the new updated print from the UCS Razor Crest on his helmet, so his visor is a bit different than well, what you usually can get, but it still looks pretty cool. Here's what his face print looks like. No open imprint, but this one certainly does look good. Second off, instead of his usual cape, he's rocking a jetpack in gunmetal gray. This is the same type of jetpack as seen in the original Five of First Battle Pack, but as I said, instead of blue, it is gun in gunmetal gray. Still looks really, really cool. But of course, probably the star of the show is the new Darksaber. Actually kind of ironic. So I go to make a new dark saber, only for our Moff Gideon to crush the dark saber in the season three finale. Hey, not like Lego knew. Anyway, it does have this new pe this, this new blade piece in black, and probably for the first time I've ever seen a lightsaber hilt in gunmetal gray. And comparing it to the previous version of the same weapon. I would definitely say it is better. It's not as good as it can be, and custom printers have proven that. However, while it may not be a long step, it's certainly a step in the right direction. And next up we have what for me is probably the standout figure for this set. This is the Mandalorian Fleet Commander. He does have the same, uh, basically the same uh, printing ink on his helmet as Mando does, with the exception of that pretty cool the Oh, oh, Mark on top, he has an antenna attached to his helmet. And I gotta say, the colors just look great on this. Between the metallic silver, the dark blue, and the light blue, that just like, makes a beautiful color contrast. What can I say? Mandalorians look good in blue. Uh, he's also rocking a blaster pistol and a thermal detonator, along with another metallic uh, gunmetal gray jetpack. And here's what he looks like without that jetpack attached. Nothing too crazy, but it's a nice addition. Here's what he looks like without that and helmet. And I gotta say, that's definitely a useful face, as is the alternate face. Those would definitely be welcome on other figures. In fact, when I first saw this, uh, these faces, I was like, wow, these would look great on Finn. And to top it all off, they do include a hairpiece for him, which just looks great. 
All right, next up is your all too necessary Imperial pilot. This is actually marked as a TIE fighter pilot by flying an interceptor. However, I think the difference isn't really necessary. You got your regular uh, pilot de and, uh, decals. Actually, uh, for, for some, I actually don't think that I've ever seen these pockets down here at the knees, but actually looks pretty good. Uh, just your basic thing on the back as well. And for the first time, at least as far as I know, we get ourselves a female pilot in a dark tan skin tone. Again, probably the first time I've ever seen this one. She is walking your classic Han Solo style Star Wars blaster. And for the final figure in the set, a bit of a throwaway character, this is the Imperial Astromech Droid R2E6. Uh, this is probably my first time with a dark colored Astromech Droid, and I gotta say, I'm, I'm not really a fan of it. These dark colors don't really work well with Astromechs. Uh, the, the majority of the detailing is in metallic silver, with the exception of the blue up top. Uh, the one thing I will say that they definitely got good, at least with this particular one, is that um, with the uh, with the stripe that always goes around the bottom of the dome, um, I've always got mm, uh, figures where they just can't get the line, where they just can't get the line straight. There's always like a small but noticeable lump on it. But I gotta say with this one, they got down flat, no pun intended. So, like I said, not my, probably not my favorite of the figures, but he looks good nonetheless. All right, with all the minifigures out of the way, it's time to take a look at the two fighters, starting with the Mandalorian Fang Fighter. Um, I will start off with saying, um, I'm not exactly a fan of the color scheme between the white and the, uh, the dark gray. I kind of wish that there was some more color in there, like maybe some red or your classic Mandalorian blue. However, that is a bit nitpicky. Uh, the model itself, however, um, is actually pretty fantastic. It has a mainly um, plate on top of plate on top of plate build. But I gotta admit, that makes for some pretty excellent stability. This is probably one of the few sets I've ever picked up where I don't feel like if I accidentally drop this thing, it's gonna fall apart in a million pieces. It is very structurally sound. Um, one of the downsides about this is that I'm sure a lot of you people know that the Fang Fighter, like, kind of like the Gauntlet, has the functionality of, well, in-universe, where the cockpit can, like, stay in one place while the rest of the ship rotates around it in combat. Unfortunately, yeah, this set doesn't actually do that, but I think the stability is more than worth it. Uh, while I will say um, I'm not a fan of the Kowski, I do like the pattern where it is kind of broken up between the white and the gray and you will see uh, that underneath it's basically mirrored and you will also see underneath you have a couple of st uh, spring load shooters with the red bolts. bolts and on top of that you have the two cannons up top. Uh, those are just there for display, they don't actually function, but hey, you got the two spring load shooters underneath, so oh, there's that. And the engine, and I gotta say that the engines back here are pretty well done, considering they're mainly only done with uh, five pieces, counting the Technic Rod that goes in front. Uh, the other main function you know, of this ship is, of course, the opening cockpit. I am happy to say that that is a printed piece for the console. There are no stickers in the set, so that makes me very happy. But I'm sure you guys are wondering why in the world does such a small ship have, for its size, a rather large cockpit? And that is for a very simple fact. And that is that you can put your Mandalorian, whether it be your Mando, or your fleet commander here. You can put him in cockpit and, and all, and he fits just fine. You do have to lower the end uh, for the fleet commander to fit him inside there. However, as we see in Empire Strikes Back with Boba Fett, he does that anyway, so no problem. Also, there is one interesting little function. Um, I'm not sure if they planned this at all, but if you want, you can just pop this top piece off and you can throw in your thermal detonator and the blaster. And you can just pop the piece back on. Ooh. Almost got almost got on there. I want to do it like this. And yeah, you can just 
pop those back on there, and you're good. And you're good to go. I'm not sure if a Lego will actually planned on that that being an option, but if you want, you can do that. Unfortunately, you can't fit the Fleet Commanders here and there as well. That's not there's not quite enough room for that. But all in all, I'd say this is a very well designed ship. And for the final build of this set, we have the TIE Interceptor. Considering this is only the second TIE Interceptor LEGO has made, with the first being made all the way back in 2006, where the main color is being black and blue, the difference between these two sets is basically night and day. The worst thing you may notice about this TIE Fighter when you build this thing is that it's heavier than it looks. And that's probably because of how much, just how much technic is in this set. Basically the entire skeleton for both of the, the sections between the cockpit and the wings and the wing assembly is basically 100% technic. So while it also makes it heavy, it is also very stable. One thing I definitely say about this TIE Fighter is that they definitely got down a lot of the details. Especially the, the outline of the gray with the black. Act that act looks absolutely fantastic. Definitely helps with these these uh, somewhat no, ra these rather new super small wedge pl uh, blades with with only two studs on, t on top. It really helps get those really small edges in. The of course the main function is that you can open the cockpit. Oops, you put that back on right there. That right back on. There we go. So you of course you can open the cockpit. I'll just leave that off. Uh, it seems to want to keep going off. So open glass and the top, and put in your Tie Fighter pilot. You do have to want to put it in down below, because the the top part is a bit cramped. Put in for put to put your pilot in with the helmet. There are a couple of studs in there, so it will steal right in. Actually, one of the nice things. About this build is that the glass completely seals seals in with the with these with these place with the rounded edges it completely seals in it will get caught a little bit so you do need kind of need to push on both sides of the cockpit but it will seal in there just fine and here's a quick look at what that looks like from the top up there is one control panel on there. No controls take on like the Mandalorian fighter, but there are some controls. And here is the underside of, of uh, the fighter where you've got your two spring loaded shooters with the Imperial green shots for the TIE fighter, unlike the Rebel red for the Mandalorian fighter. And again, the details on this thing are just fantastic. You have the two red uh, transparent plates on the back to represent your twin ion engines, which is actually what TIE stands for, twin ion engines, that's what powers this thing. Uh, you do have the two uh, uh, blue Technic pins in the back that uphold uh, the uh, the wings instead to the main body. Kind of a little distracting, but from what I've heard, uh, LEGO color codes and their Technic pins to know their uh, their exact length and dimensions. So, so apparently that's why they don't change the colors on Technic pins. Uh, but again, the details on this thing are just kind of kind of crazy. Like <laughs> you got you got the targeting, you actually got the targeting sensors here. You got your wing uh, wing mounted laser cannons, and they're just there for display. But they look great. And like I said, this thing is heavy the heavier than you got might think for a tie interceptor. I won't be too surprised if it's a good half of the nearly a thousand pieces that come with this set. I put in this TIE Fighter, but it makes for a very strong, very heavy, very heavy build, and it just, it it puts the 2006 TIE Interceptor kind of to shame, really, because of just how good this thing looks. And one minor note that you might find a little interesting, you can actually have this thing standing on its uh, new wing tip laser cans, and so you can kind of make it look like it is hanging from the ceiling like you see in The Mandalorian. And just to give you guys a sense of scale with these two new fighters, here it is next to the 2019 TIE Fighter from Solo A Star Wars Story. 
And now that I take a look at that, the TIE Interceptor is basically too scale with that TIE Fighter, so it actually looks really good. And for those of you who are interested, here's what you get for the extra pieces. You get one extra spring-loaded shooter weapon, with both for the TIE Interceptor and Thing Fighter. Got yourself an extra thermal detonator and blaster, a couple of extra antenna and visors, because apparently those come in separate packs. But what's really nice is that they provide a second dark saber. Alright, now that I've shown off everything this set has to offer, it's time for my final thoughts. Of course, the question I'm sure is on everyone's mind is do I believe that this set is worth the $100 value? Do you get enough out of this set to make it worth your money? And I say 100% yes, the two fighters are very solid builds, it's a good balance between functionality and stability and style. Uh, on top of that, well, I forgot to mention in both in the reviews of both these fighters, the swoosh ability on these guys is 10 out of 10. Whether you have these sets for play or display, either way, they're, they're both going to look great. The you know, figures, um, I cannot feel like this should have been like a special fifth figure. Uh, I think the top three on my list would be either an Imperial Super Commando, Praetorian Guard, or even better, Moff Gideon in his new Dark Trooper armor. That would just that would just top it off, make it absolutely fantastic. But honestly, if they just sold these fighters in like separate sets, like they did with the the uh, the Pirate Snub Fighter, like the, like the the Mandalorian Fighter with Mando and Fleet Commander, and the Tie Interceptor with the Tie Pod and Astromech, and then throw in a third figure, I'd still buy these sets. They would it'd be great, but getting both in one set is even better. I would not be the least bit surprised if people would pick up two or three of these guys to expand their Imperial and Mandalorian armies. And the fact that, that you get the Darksaber with Mando is, is another nice touch. I think between this set and the the fighter tank, if you want to get the new Darksaber, this would be the set I would get. Yeah, I'd definitely say you get more for your money. So yeah, this is a solid set. If it, you guys have any interest in it, I would definitely suggest this be a day one buy. Of all the sets that are coming out in time for May 4th, this was the one set that I wanted the most, and I'm glad I got it. No regrets, and I would certainly recommend it to anyone who is interested in this set. And I forgot to mention this. At the beginning of the video, sorry about that, but I, I did purchase this set. This set was not provided me by Lego, and all opinions on the set are mine and mine alone. So I hope you guys enjoy this video, and I hope anyone interested in this set has found the, uh, this review to be of any interest and or value to help you decide whether you want to get this set for yourself. Thank you for joining me for this video. If you enjoyed it, you guys know what to do. Hit the like, subscribe, and notification buttons helps me on the YouTube algorithm. Let me know down in the comments what you thought of today's video, and if you plan on picking up this or any set for Star Wars Day, check out my new channel and a few other videos on the end screen in just a few seconds. I'll see you all in the next video, and may the 4th be with you always.